is incredible. I feel like this is not at no all idea. how I, I pictured a food bank. Welcome. How are you guys? Good. Good, good, good to good see you again. You. I'm David. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Erica. Hi, David. Hannah. Anna, nice to meet you. Welcome, guys. Thanks for coming. This is the Greater Vancouver Food Bank. Uh, this is our main warehouse. It's about 40,000 square foot of space in the main warehouse. And 8 million pounds of food left this warehouse last year and went out into the community in direct distribution to our clients and then to our agency partners as well. We help right now in direct distribution probably about 17,000 people every month. We're signing up about 800 to 1,000 new clients a month right now. Uh, so we're delighted you're here and give you a tour. When I started five years ago, we spent probably about a million dollars buying food. Now my budget for starting in July 1st, the budget for next year is about 8.5. Wow. So that's the growth. And that's that's where you're crazy saying, too, growth. We don't have a food scarcity, it's just food waste problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no shortage of food. There's a distribution problem and a lot of food goes to landfill. Yeah. About how many tons a day? There's about 10 or 15 tons a day goes to landfill. And like the easy, the easy numbers to remember, like I think I told you on the podcast, is Canada produces enough food for 52 million people. There's 38 million people in the country and 5 million people go to bed hungry. And I'm actually going to the, the Food Bank Canada conference at the end of this month in Edmonton and they've asked me to kind of speak about some of the stuff that we're doing because everybody else, like two years ago, people were like, you guys have lost your minds, like what are you going to do? And, but it's, it's been hugely beneficial because yeah. it's educating the public that actually people having a tough time can afford those instant noodles and the craft dinner. That's kind of food banking 10, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. It's not what we're doing now. What we're doing now with the amount of food that's out there and the fresh food that's out there, that's what we're focused on. So people having a tough time can afford the instant noodles. They can't afford the fresh fruit and veg, the milk, the cheese, the eggs, the dairy and all the other stuff. That's what we're doing. So one of the other things we did that I really wanted to do, we wanted to build a kitchen. And so we built this kitchen. This is beautiful. And uh, it kind of has, it serves a lot of different purposes. Uh, it's fully permitted uh, by the health department, the same as any restaurant. So we can actually cook, prepare food here. We can take it out of here and serve it if we want to. Mm -hmm. um, it's also a staff kitchen, but it's also for, for us to, to help maybe train other agency groups. So we can teach knife skills, food safe, canning, all sorts of fermenting, whatever it is. One of the most like, successful things we did was actually showing people how to make kimchi, you know, and, and yeah. pre preserving food, doing different things. We've got a big dehydrator over there so we can do different things as well. I also have a monthly staff meeting in here when I got all six, 65 staff in and we all have a lunch together and then we do some, some, some kind of education presentation. I tell them people what's going on and what's happening. And then the other idea behind building this this way with the big barn doors was I got the concrete polished, the, the floor's all polished here and out here. And this is the food sort area where the food that comes from grocery stores and the bins. So it's because we don't get the public donations anymore, but we still get the from the grocery stores. Yeah. But this is where we get volunteers helping do the food sort into, into different categories. But this can all get moved in 10 minutes on pallets. It goes down the aisles. And then this is where we would set up a gala dinner. Is the food donated or do you actually purchase no, the no, food? No, this no, this is all donated from grocery stores. So we. We have volunteers and a couple of staff go through. We look at all the dates. It all gets organized and put into these different categories you see. It looks really complicated, but it's not. And we've kind of con combined it into this space in this area. So it's really, you know, it works, it flows, and it's nice and easy. It's a lot smaller than it used to be. And there's a lot less food than it used to be in this, in this, in the food sort area. But now it's, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll eventually get rid of this, I hope. But... Our catchment area is Vancouver, North Vancouver, and New Westminster Burnaby. So we distribute food two ways. We distribute it directly to clients that live in those municipalities, but we also distribute to 141 agency partners that we have. So that could be after school program, it could be a soup kitchen, it could be, you know, uh, women fleeing domestic violence with their kids kind of thing, living in different areas and different places. So we supply all of those 141 with food, and we also supply about somewhere in the region with 20, 25 other food banks with food because we're so big. And so when you deal with someone like Loblaws and, you, and what we deal with a lot as well, and I'll show you when we get to the end of the tour, we do a lot of uh, uh, pre-consumer food. So food that hasn't gone to the grocery store. So in South Surrey, there's a massive distribution warehouse for Loblaws and Costco and all the other big retailers. And that's where all the food is kept that goes to all of their stores. So they're buying more food and more food's coming in to that warehouse. And if they haven't sold a lot of food, it was going to go to landfill. 
hadn't even gone to the grocery store. So it's absolutely pristine food. That's what we pick up every week. What we do, which is quite different from other food banks, we actually create menus. And we do this about a month in advance. So we build a menu you can actually uh, create meals from. Um, so in that week, you're going to get uh, beef tortellini, milk, potatoes, apples, onions, happy planet, oat drinks, bread. And then we just put under here mixed fresh and frozen. There's a lot of other add-ons we get, and we don't know what's going to be donated. Yes. So you could end up probably getting 13 to 15 items, maybe 22, 24 pounds of food. And we're, our goal is 60 to 70 percent fresh. On top of this, what we also do once a month on different weeks, and we'll show you what the guys are doing here. Uh, if you have a baby that's zero to 12 months, once a month you'll get the baby pack, where you'll get baby formula and you know ideal food for the first 12 months of, of, of life. Ages 13 to 23 months, you'll get the baby steps, preschooler pack, grade schooler pack, six to 12 year old, and then when you hit 65, you get the senior pack. So we know how old your kids are because we ask when you, when you register with us so we can keep track of how, how old your children are. So not only are you getting a whole menu of food, but you're also getting these additional packs. And this is where we spend a lot of our money because we buy all of this stuff to make sure we're giving proper nutrition to people. We designed this with uh, nut uh, dietitians, nutritionists. We spend a lot of time working on these, refining them. The kind of foods that we want to introduce to kids. When you get to the grade schooler pack, you get deli meats and you get fresh bread, things like that, because you want to make sure they're getting their school lunches. And their school lunch has got to look next, the same as the little kid next to them that doesn't have problems at home with lack of money and funds, right? Because there's a lot of that in schools. Somebody's ashamed to open their lunchbox because it's shitty. This is what we call refrigeration alley, obviously, for a reason. So what this is, if we get large donations of meat or whatever it might be, uh, we have a butcher bandsaw, so we can portion it, cut it down into smaller portions. We've got a vacuum packing machine where we can vacuum pack food. If we get big blocks of cheese, we have a meat slicer and a cheese slicer in there. If we get big donations from farmers, we can wash it all down because there's a big floor drain in here. This was awesome when the cruise ships weren't sailing with the pandemic, because I got all the cruise ship food. Seven shipping containers of food. So we were handing out prawns, scallops, duck, sirloin steaks. <laughs> Oh my goodness. It was insane. It was so much fun. Like I was like, this is great. This is yeah. so cool. So this is a group of volunteers that we have. And this is, we'll show you the kind of stuff we're doing. What are we, what are you guys packing? packing the senior packs. Senior packs. Yeah, senior awesome. Packs. So all of these bags are refrigeration bags. They're really cool. They were all donated to us. They keep food actually nice and cold in the fridges. And so go down the line and these are the bags that you saw in the end there for the seniors. Yeah. The end one, 65 plus. So we're making all these and we're up to, I don't know, probably between 2,500 and 3,000 senior packs a month. These will go out for distribution to the different sites on top of the regular menu that's there. We have big pulley cords to open the fridge doors because the main, accident, main number one accident in the warehouse is guys getting on and off the forklift. They twist their ankles and because they're, they're always rushing around. So you just sit on the forklift, pull the cord and the door opens. This is one of two coolers. It really does feel like you're walking into one of the Costco cold rooms. I, the other thing I did when we moved here was purposely built ref this whole refrigeration alley uh, because it, this is 400% uh, increase on the volume of what we had previously. Because my whole goal was to go towards giving people fresh, proper food. So these apples are grown by a farmer up in Winfield and he grows them for us. So when you and I go to the store and we buy apples at 253 bucks a pound, I get these for 40 cents and because he has orchards that he literally just grows for us and it just covers his cost of growing apples. So you can see we're giving, you know, and so when somebody says to me, oh, I'm going to give you $10 or I'm going to give you $40 and you just times that right by 40 divided by 40 cents. That's how many pounds of apples I can give. I went to a hotel in Vancouver. They were giving me a check for a thousand dollars that the staff had raised the money. And I said, you know, it's unbelievable, you know, a thousand dollars. This literally lets me buy two and a half thousand pounds of apples. Yeah, so two and a half thousand families are going to get a pound of fresh apples this week. And people's minds are just like, oh my God. So what's better? Think of 65% sodium noodles or a pound of fresh apples? This is incredible. I feel like this is not no at all idea. how I, I pictured a food bank. I, I mean, when we were younger, we would go volunteer at the food bank in London, Ontario, but it was all non-perishables. They didn't have this like fresh food system in place. This is incredible. Well, so when I started, it was 10%, 15% fresh. So we've, you know, four times that. And up to, I, I want to get to 70, 75% fresh uh, that people can use. And you know, yeah. they can't. It's the milk that's expensive. It's the eggs that are expensive. It's all these things. So I, we spend forty thousand dollars a month buying eggs. 
because yeah. eggs are so easy to use, right? Yeah. And they're so high in nutrition and they're just, so we spend about 40,000 a month buying those. So this is a lot of donated product that hasn't been sorted yet. You see the volunteers we have out here? Yeah. They're going through and they're making sure, the very simple rule is if you wouldn't feed it to your family or your kids, we're not gonna give it to our clients. So this, this tells you where it comes from, it tells you who the driver is, where they picked it up, it tells you the weight. This is Costco. So this is a donation from Costco. We got this whole box and some of these because there's a split in a couple, right? So what the guys out here will do, they'll go through and sort all of the food like, I mean, look at this. It's perfectly used. <laughs> yeah, perfect kiwi. Right? And so they'll go through and they'll sort the food. And one of the things we're super proud of as well is we make sure that everything is perfect and washed and clean. And what they do out here is these big blue bins, any food item that's not, that is substandard, not for human consumption, goes into the blue bin. That goes back to our partners, Refeed Farms and Langley. So we have zero food waste. Amazing. So what Refeed Farms does, it's human consumption first. Uh, they're a waste haul company as well. So they get these big, like 20 tons of grapes going to go to landfill. They, Stuart tells us, we take them, we sort them. Any food that's not good for human consumption goes for animal livestock. And then anything that's not for livestock, he composts and feeds it to his worms. And he's got a three-story worm farm and he's, uh, the, all the worm castings becomes like a, it's an organic material, like a miracle grow for plants and, the, and for making soil better. So there's less chemicals in soil, so we're growing better food. So I can really say, tell everybody, we have zero food waste. Yeah. These guys are the backbone of the establishment over here, sorting food. Brad's been with us forever. So literally we go through, and there, as I say, in the bin is, is, is sort of what's gonna go back to the refeed farms. And then we make sure everything else is, you know, pretty much perfect, ready for our clients. So when food comes in like that, that you get donated, how do you, I guess, kind of pivot um, in terms of where you're gonna send the food, what you put in the packages, how do you decide? Uh, well, it's a part of the add-ons at the end of that menus that we create. Okay. So, you know, for example, like we didn't know we were gonna have 20 tons of grapes. So we, we would have done menus of maybe a month in advance and then a week, you know, that week we get 20 tons of grapes. So it literally becomes, it literally becomes that we are, uh, we're just handing out extra food. In, in the case of the grapes, we get on the phone and we phone 25 other food banks from Nanaimo, Loaves and Fishes, all the way up to uh, Lake Country in the Okanagan. Joy runs the food bank up there. This is what we have. You either want to come and get it, or can we send it to you? We've partnered with Cisco. So Cisco deals with, uh, they have a contract with all the Subway restaurants that they have to, to deliver to. And so if they, they say if they have space on their trucks, they'll take food anywhere in BC that we want to take them. So we get on, literally get, we got a team get on the phone, what do you need, this is what we've got, uh, and we get the food moved. So it doesn't go to waste. And you know, you see the news every day and it's all, oh my God, it's terrible this and terrible. Like, like it's like, from my side, it's actually really, people are really good. There's so many people want to do good and want to help, it's unbelievable. It's but it doesn't make news, right? This is the big game changer for us. We never had a freezer before. So this is minus 18, it's lovely and chilly. We'll be really quick, I promise. Fresh beef tortellini, proper food. And we'll give our pasta sauce to go with it. So if you're a single person, you might get one bag. If you're a couple, you get two. If you're a family, you might get three bags, right? So we do it accordingly. But this is all ready for that to go out. Um, this just came in. So we get this every week from Bimbo Bakery in, uh, in Langley. Every week they send us 5,000 loaves at least of bread. Wow. Just, they donate That's a lot it. of bread. Right? And you feel it, like fresh bagels. Yeah. Right? And, and the, it's crazy too, because like the Silver Hills is expensive. So what we'll do is we'll get volunteers tonight. We'll get all the bread, we put it all into banana boxes and then we freeze it. So it's been frozen today and then we hand it out as, as quickly as we can to make sure it's going out. When you go to Costco supplier, are they still making a profit off of you or are they going zero profit? Nah, probably making a profit. Some, some, some organizations don't. We have a great uh, organization that we, we get a lot of vegetables and stuff from and they actually have their own foundation. So they sell it to us at cost and then the foundation makes it 20% less than cost. So it's, it's amazing. And then we also get things like in the summertime, which is really important as well. Like we get lots of bottled water donated. Um, so we keep, we always try and keep a stock of bottled water. So if we have people coming and getting, picking up food and they're kind of, you know, they're, you know, we offer like, we keep it in the fridge and we make sure it's all chilled. And then we have it out there and we're handing out bottles of water as people come and get food as well, you know, keep them hydrated. How often is it that you have clients that um, sign up and then 
decide that they're kind of they got they got back on their feet and they're able to. Oh, it's, it's awesome. We that 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 happened. It doesn't happen enough, but it, when it does happen, it's awesome. So we get you know, you know, I've been I got into a car accident. I lost my job, and you know, I've been through a tough time for the last 18 months. But you know what? I just got a job. You're not gonna. I'm, this is my last week. Thank you so much. And we're like, that's awesome. Like yeah. we're we're here when you, if you need us again, you know where we are, kind of thing. It's just like it makes the staff feel really good. And then this is just where we get different big donations. This is Happy Planet, are great donors of ours. So this is their uh, their oat drink. So we'll hand that out. And again, everything has a label on it, so we know where it came from. We know what the weight is. We know what the, who the driver was that brought it in from different locations. You really have this uh, down to a science. That's for sure. You got to. Yeah. It's a business. It's a yeah. it's a huge business. I took a lot of criticism five years ago when I started. Like, oh, what's a business guy doing, kind of running a food bank? You know, this is ridiculous. And I'm like, yeah, it is. Oh, you don't have a degree. Oh, you don't have a master's degree in social services. You can't do this. Really? It's a business. We're a thirty-two million dollar a year business now. When I started, when when I started, we were about direct distribution to our clients was about sixty-five hundred people. We're now at 17,000. And like I say, it's growing every month. And we're really fortunate because we can keep ahead of it. Um, so this van was the, one of the original vans. And when the steel workers put the staircase in over here, when they were doing all the construction yeah. and building the whole thing as we wanted it, I was like, you guys don't want to cut up a van for me, do you? Because it was sitting at the back of the warehouse with no engine and no gas tank. And they were like, damn right we do. And uh, so I, it was Joe Average, the Eastman famous artist, his name's on the side, he painted it. But Craig, who you met at the start, drove this 22 years ago, while driving around Vancouver, picking up food in a small van. Did he drive out to the farm? He would drive on all over the place in this thing, yeah. A little van and, and, uh, and we got Joe to paint it. We were offered about $20,000 for it a few years ago and I'm like, no, it's not for sale. It's like, this is part of the history and it's gonna go up on the wall. and. Just how it's like a feature. The goal to be to have technically less clients? Totally. Uh, I'd like to go to business. Yeah. The start of the pandemic when everybody got the CERB checks, the emergency money came out from the government, we saw a 30% reduction in people coming to the food bank. There's your answer. Yeah. If people can earn more money or have more money or if there's a standard income, or, and, and I don't get into all that because it's like, it's not, my, I, I want to feed people. Gas goes up five cents, I told you in the podcast. Gas goes up five cents, I'll see more people. So this is the, our 141 agency partners. Some of them come and pick up food here. So this section of the warehouse, when I first saw the place where they had a ramp and stuff coming in, this was perfect. So everything else pretty much is for direct distribution for the public. But then we keep this area, and this is like the bulk items. So again, if you're running a, an after-school program or you know, a, a drug rehab house or something along those lines, you're kind of a registered charity, you, re you register with us and you become a partner of ours, you can come here and you can pick up food to create whatever meals and everything you want. And it's kind of a lot of stuff that's in bulk. Uh, this is where we get, obviously a lot of stuff from Amazon and Costco gets put up here and they can help themselves to different things that they see. And then the really cool part is the cooler that we have where you can actually just go through here and select what you'd like. You take one of these carts uh, and then as a partner of ours, you can come through here and you can help yourself to fresh fruit and veg and the yogurt and the milk and the eggs and the cheese and the dairy. And just kind of, you see people going like, oh my God, I can make all these different things and create menus in their heads when they help, can help themselves. And then they're in turn making these healthy meals for the people that they're trying to help as well. This farmer just came in today. He gave us his bok choy he had. Still got roots on it. <laughs> Super fresh, right out of his field. From the freezer here, a lot of different things. Different, like People say to me, well, you know, Costco, the best before date has come and gone. But again, it's not because what they do is they freeze it down, we get it uh, before the best before date. So it's no different than you and I go to Costco, we buy this and we put it in our own freezer at home. Yeah. And then we're able to hand these things out to different agency partners and they come in here and they can help themselves to whatever's in here. Including treats like pastries and stuff. How many agency partners do you have coming through here on a uh, daily basis? Through here we probably have 20, 25 and the rest will go through. We have a location in Vancouver yes. at Thornton Street. So how long does it take for someone, so say a client comes in, they register for um, the program, uh, can they, be like we'll give them food that day right that there day? yeah wow. they need they want to come and register and they want to be you know they need something we'll give them food right away we don't turn anybody away 
Some of the fun things and things that have happened, we did a million meals. The Canucks, they didn't close their kitchens over the um, pandemic. Yeah. So they kept their kitchens open, they got some government funding and we would, they would make these, uh, these tinfoil trays and six portions of food in each tray. And it was a bed of vegetables and then it was anything from roast salmon uh, to chicken to uh, frittatas and so all sorts of different things. But these six meals in this tinfoil trays and they were frozen and we were handing them out. We actually handed out a million meals and when we did the millionth meal, it's the Sedaton Twins came down with Finn and their own executive chef. When the floods hit uh, a couple of years ago or 18 months ago, I got a call from Kewitt who got a couple of helicopters if you guys need to move food. So we actually flew food up around Merritt and Hope and everywhere from here to help people that were kind of uh, stranded or, or, or uh, you know, stuck with the, the roads were all washed out. What we didn't realize was that one of the pilots, his dog Mr. Bentley, has half a million followers on Instagram. So where do you find me hanging out when I'm not on vacation? Little mementos from all sorts of different stuff that we've done. Uh, I always make fun of my board of directors. <coughs> they always, they always t I have a buddy of mine who does caricatures and they always tell you a story somewhere during the year and you make a note of it. And then you kind of, we turn it into a little gift for them as a thank you for volunteering their time to be on the board and, and stuff. And uh, you know, it depends what they tell you. Like during the year, like Peter here, Peter offered, he went horseback riding in the Okanagan one summer, got chased by a grizzly bear. So <laughs> that, that turns into a story and then you get in there like, oh my God, this is awesome. Uh, and then you get your, your kid gives you pictures and when she graduated, and, thanks dad for helping me with my math. Then she comes and writes all over the wall. <laughs> Um, this is a picture that the Whitecaps started. They got Carson Ting, the artist, to, to draw this, and then they sold these on their website uh, at the start of the pandemic. Um, and we, they actually raised about $150,000 selling these pictures, and they gave me the first one frame for my office, which is really cool. That is really neat. So yeah, everything kind of has a little story of some sort, but we like to have fun, and I, I let people bring their dogs in because, you know, we, every day we're hearing stories of people having a tough time, and you get compassion fatigue is a real thing, right? So if we can make the workplace like a real kind of fun place, and people have a good time, and we're doing good work. I told you the story about Ryan Reynolds getting a hold of us, and he, he reached out, and we thought it was, reached, uh, yeah, it's not Ryan Reynolds, it's somebody else, it's just, you know, oh, yeah. just messing with us. And uh, so it was the comms team, and they wouldn't give him my they wouldn't give him my contact info because they thought I would screw it up. So, so they gave him so this person that we, we no, I don't really think it's Ryan Reynolds or whatever. And so we gave him Cynthia, my chief operating officer, gave Cynthia's contact info, and we were literally half an hour later in a meeting in the boardroom, just sitting down here. And her her phone rings, and it's like, fuck, it's Ryan Reynolds. Hi, and there was a line of female employees down the hall and males. I shouldn't say that, I guess. But so, and so he, he became a huge supporter. And he, he, $25,000 was, he was got from Deloitte for doing something in the States and he wanted to donate that. And he's like, so let's do this matching campaign and see if we can't double it or triple it. And, you know, so we did this big social media thing and, you know, Ryan and Blake and what they'd done. And we launched on a Tuesday morning. It was like eight o'clock. And then he got on, jumped on it like half an hour later and started doing the whole thing as well. And we were hoping to, so cool. we were hoping to take the 25,000 and make it 50 or 75,000, turn into $575,000. Wow. That's the power of Blake, right? It yeah. totally <laughs> is. <laughs> what you see with Ryan Reynolds is what you get. Like we passed, you know, we were, we were keeping them updated and we're like, oh my God, this has passed $100,000. Oh my God, or $150,000. Like, it's a quarter of a million dollars, you know, and then we passed the $500,000 mark and we were just kind of texting with him and you get this text straight back and he went, Blake just high-fived me so hard, I'm gonna have to type with my hose now. <laughs> like, right? You can see him saying it. Yeah. Like, like it's just so cool. But no, we have a lot of fun. Like what we do is super serious and it's a big business, but you gotta have some fun doing it too. Yeah. So yeah. it's uh, it's kind of a cool place to work. Mm -hmm. You don't have to say it is just because I'm standing. It's kind of cool. Well, no, I went from registering clients to to working on reception to now working here. So I've had the experience of being able to actually register our clients and see the impact it actually has on them. And David tells the story once, but it was me the time where I uh, registered a woman and took her through the lineup. And as soon as we were about to give her blueberries. It's always a quite emotional experience to come register for a food bank, but she kept it together so well 
And when she grabbed the blueberry, there was just a tear line under her eyes. And so I didn't want to push too much, but then I just wanted to make sure she was okay walking away. And that's when she let me know that she didn't have fruits in six months. And it was just utterly heartbreaking. Oh my gosh. And she had to make difficult decisions to take care of her children and didn't have fruits for that long. So it was tears of joy, she said, and she was actually uh, so happy. We gave each other a little bit of a hug and walked away, but uh, it really sunk in and had some unlimited amount of stories. So is it, do you give somebody blueberries or do you give them one of those things with instant noodles? Yeah. What's she taking home to her kids? Yeah, blueberries, right? Thank you for joining us on this in-depth tour of the Vancouver Food Bank. If you were moved by what you've seen, consider making a difference by donating or volunteering through their website, and together we can create a stronger, more compassionate community.